Good morning. Welcome as we gather today at Living Lord Lutheran Church. My name is Dawn Ruka. I am a pastor. Uh, pastor Sue and I have gone to seminary together, so we are longtime colleagues and, and friends. So it is an honor to be with you. My husband and I are uh, neighbors. We live just down the road in Bartlett, and uh, so it's a, a joy to be here with you today. Today we will hear. 5,000, one of only, one of only sh uh, the shared stories that is in all four of the Gospels. We'll hear from John's Gospel about how Jesus invites us to consider a, him in a new way as we take him in completely. So today, I hope you'll begin this service with me by breathing in deeply letting out all those worries and cares, and feel the spirit of God's grace, wonder, and love. May he be with you today. Let us join together in singing our opening hymn. Please be seated. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And let us pray. Gracious God, your blessed Son came from heaven to be the true bread, the bread that gives life to the world. Give us this bread that we may that he may live in us and us in him always, and strengthened by this food that we live as his body in the world. Through him, the living bread of life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The word of God. The reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at the 25th verse. Stop lying to each other. Tell the truth. For we are parts of each other, and when we lie to each other, we are hurting ourselves. If you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Don't let the sun go down with you still angry. Get over it quickly. For when you are angry, you give a mighty foothold to the devil. 
If anyone is stealing, he must stop it and begin using those hands for honest work and give to others in need. Don't use bad language. Say only what is good and helpful to those who are, talk who are talking to and will give... Wait a minute. Say only what is good and helpful to those you are talking to and what will give them a blessing. Don't cause the Holy Spirit sorrow by the way you live. Remember, he is the one who marks you to be present on that day when salvation from sin will be complete. Stop being mean, bad-tempered, and angry. Quarreling, harsh words, and dislike of others should have no place in your lives. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God has forgiven you, because you belong to Christ. Follow God's example in everything you do, just as a much-loved child imitates her parents. Be full of love for others, following the example of Christ who loved you and gave himself to God as a sacrifice to take away your sins. And God was pleased, for Christ's love for you was like sweet perfume to him. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and gave himself up for us as a sweet, fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here ends the reading. Please rise as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Well, I'm going to see if I can actually give it to you from memory today. It's, I, I realize that, and I invite you to, to join along with me. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty, but you haven't believed in me even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will, this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he had said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and his mother. How can he say he came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said. For no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. It is, as it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father, learns from him, comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, only I who was sent from God have seen him. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread 
which I will offer so the world may live, is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to please be seated. I invite you to wonder for a bit with me today. I know living Lord hasn't been um, in this gospel text that uh, is part of the lectionary all of the end of July and, and August and sometimes into the beginning of early December. But I am going to gorge you full with the wonder and fullness of what I lovingly call the Gospel of John's Bread Lectures. Except hopefully I just won't be up here being a talking head. Hopefully you will think some of these things through and, and feel free to, if not shout it out loud, at least think it out loud in your hearts and minds. So just a brief recap. Many Christians have been hearing uh, for weeks this feeding of, uh, from John of the feeding of the 5,000 and its aftermath. The basics are, after some hard road work, Jesus tries to draw the overwhelmed disciples into a retreat. But mass crowds follow the hungry for more of Jesus. Seeing them, Jesus recognizes their investment in following him. And perhaps he considers that a hangry mob could get ugly. So he gives the disciples a test on their beliefs. Uh, on the sham or fairy tale, if you will, of the, the scarcity model and the miracles in comparison with the miracles of abundance. So with five loaves and two fish, Jesus feeds the throngs with 12 baskets left over. And he proves that he is more than enough. When Jesus saw that they hungered now to make him an idol king of all things, he and the disciples hightail it across the lake. But the persistent, hungry horde swarmed after them. Now Jesus stood up to their misintentions, but their tummies did all the talking. Their desiring rather than their hearts. You see, this ravenous crowd doesn't really know where their bread is buttered. They marveled at the miracle of yesterday, but never gave God thanks generously. They never wondered about God's generosity. Today, they come following Jesus, and it's clear. They experienced no miracle in the feeding the day before. The people are still just concerned for their bellies. Jesus, however, is concerned for their lives. The people want to feed themselves with free daily bread. Jesus wants to feed them with God's free gift of grace. Jesus tells him, them that he is the bread of life. If they consume him, they will never be hungry again. With this wondrous bread, they will live forever. They don't quite get it. I wonder how often we don't really get it either. Too often, God's people refuse or, or cannot see the mercy and manna that God sets before them or us. The stomach, our basic instincts, is our driving force. For all of the things we crave and we think we lack, all of the things we imagine would make life better for us. We hunger, too, for what we do not see and seek many other tastes. And so I think most of us miss the miracle, even when we think we have hold of it. How many of us ignore what is right in front of us? The miracles of each day. We are often seeking far less than what God richly gives. 
I think we rarely catch the divine wonder. So let me ask you, do you ever wonder about bread? In 1921, Elmer Klein was at a fair in Indianapolis when he saw hundreds of hot air balloons in the sky. The sight of them filling him with a sense of awe and wonder and amazement. And that became the inspiration for his company's new product. His company was the Taggart Bread Company, and his product? Wonder Bread. Taggart was the first to offer sliced bread, the first to slow bake and take the air bubbles out of the inside. This bread, the white sliced enriched bread in the bright balloon dotted bag was a miraculous convenience for America. Now, bread had been around for thousands of years in every culture. It's certainly a symbol of the necessity of food and sustenance. It's nutritious, providing important essentials in every, uh, in every body. It's easy to make and yet slightly different in every culture. But bread is essential. For us and for many cultures, however, speaking for myself, of course, we get too much of it. And yet still we all know that there are millions going hungry every day. Just around the globe in, say, Sudan, people are dropping dead for the lack of bread. People exist on just one small meal a day. Too much and too little bread. It makes me wonder. Gandhi once said that, and it still stands today, that there are people in the world so hungry that God cannot appear to them except in the form of bread. The only thing that can remedy hunger is bread, physical bread. It's comfort, the texture, the weight, all the, the taste and smell combine to make it an essential comfort food. But with all of that, the wonder of bread, it only fills us for a moment. You can pick it up and take it home, but it only lasts a short time. Especially in this summer heat, how often have you gone and looked and it's speckled with green? But God, now God, God offers the bread that fully satisfies and lasts forever. This bread, the bread of life. So have you ever wondered about this bread of life? Now, pandemic notwithstanding, there was a time recently when Holy Communion was not offered weekly in many churches. In some denominations, the Eucharist was monthly or maybe even annual, an annual event. More than that, people uh, felt that it could become too commonplace. Yet I have wonder, have you ever really thought about how often we need or how much you might crave Jesus? I think we need Jesus every day. Hopefully you crave him every day to grasp God's goodness and truly take him in. So today I invite you to focus and wonder right now, about this God who so graciously provides. I know that f for some, or maybe many, the wonder just escapes us. So I want you to think about it this way. When I was still in seminary, um, at a 
place in Norwood Park outside of Chicago at a place called Teaching Parish. Um, one Sunday, I was serving as communion assistant, and I followed the pastor uh, who was handing out the, the bread, the wafer, by precarious, and I was precariously uh, carrying this tray of mini silver wine goblets. They, they balance delicately on this tray. And as I was approaching uh, to give a nice blue-haired lady uh, her little goblet of wine, I heard her lean over to her friend and say, This? Disdainfully holding that waiver. This is the foretaste of the feast to come? Styrofoam Jesus? Styrofoam Jesus. How many of us even contemplate the living bread that much? This precious child of God was dubious about the efficacy of the sacrament. It seemed unmoving to her. She was searching for more. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. We, the people, are most usually concerned with our bellies, our current appetites. But Jesus is concerned about our whole lives. While we want to feed ourselves with things, Jesus wants to feed us with God. With the bread that will fill and change you forever. This bread writes the last chapter. It gives you the preservative you need for all time. For you and for me, he gives eternal life. So have you ever considered how receiving this bread of life makes a difference in your life? Do you really ever wonder about that life? I mean, life certainly can be awesome, can't it? From flowers growing each spring to babies' tiny fingers and toes and sweet smell to vaccines to family life and living to just the simple pleasures of, of being able to get back into the swing of society and the things we missed. Those ordinary things, they make a difference. That make us different. But when we consider that sometimes life is hard, disappointing, mean or treacherous, crazy-making, add your own adjectives, it's a wonder then that we would even hope for eternal life. Yet we gather in the hope and promise that eternal life is a thing. And we certainly hope it's better than sliced bread. Jesus comes. And I invite you to imagine what that's like. I mean, some people, I think, imagine eternal life with God as sitting on a cloud with endless harp music playing in the background, and everything is alleluia perfect. For many people, that sounds super boring. In the Bible, in the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, the etern eternal life is the gift at the end of life, or at the end of the age and the final judgment. But in John, eternal life is described as present possession. Essentially saying that in Christ, or Christ in us, we can have it all. That we have the curse of death pass over us, and we avoid God's judgment, which we all deserve. Yet still, do you ever wonder about what that really means for you? What life with Jesus is all about. So I invite you to think for a moment. Do any of you remember growing up hearing the phrase, you are what you eat? 
As kids, we mean it as an insult, but Jesus means it for real. For when we believe in Jesus, eating, ingesting, and taking him into our lives, the wondrous thing is we live differently. Possessing life with Christ is being Christ-like. Now, you all heard, maybe read, that lesson from Ephesians, the first reading today. It reminds us of what being Christ-like is like where we enter into new life in Christ. We enter into a new community and a new culture with a particular way of living with one another. That lesson reminds us that new life means letting go, releasing what is false, and adhering to the commitment to speak the truth to one another. The church is the place where truth can be spoken the difficult truths about our world and about ourselves, and the gracious truth about this God who redeems us. And we get to see ourselves in this new life and as one with other people, created in the image and likeness of God, rather than see them as obstacles and issues to be overcome. And we can trust the silence of prayer, rather than the words of argument. We can choose love and forgiveness rather than anger and retribution. We can relate with intimacy and vulnerability rather than superficiality and defensiveness. And we can listen for God's voice rather than bloat ourselves with our own. Ultimately, we can seek life rather than death. This life with Jesus imitates who he is and what he's all about. It's loving others guided by God's loving grace. In both action and words, we are to become conduits for God's grace. The extraordinary thing is we can most find, most easily find, the extraordinary wonder of Jesus in the most ordinary activities of the day. Again, I think about those tiny babies that are born and grow and change each day. The boundless energy of puppies, looking at all kinds of things in nature, particularly at spring and summer, of hugs, of kindness, of simple, easy words. God is most glorified when we are most satisfied in God. So I invite you this day, this week, never stop wondering Our role is to share God's wonder and abundance and graciousness by fully taking it and taking in this wonder bread, this bread of heaven, and becoming more like Jesus. Yes, it is a lifelong and often difficult process. Think about the baking of bread, how it bubbles and changes from Uh, more liquid or uh, kind of a solid form into that airy, full, sometimes textured, sometimes heavy, sometimes lighter, different flavored bread that is life-giving and sustaining. Becoming more like Jesus is growing in sometimes that slow and maturing way, and it's opening our eyes to the way the bread of heaven can sustain us today, physically and spiritually, and cause others to crave this wonder and see it and feel it too, marveling at the precious miracles of God's generosity. So in faith, I hope you humbly ponder this surpassing wonder of all your days. All the ways that you can be sustenance that brings real life for others and for the sake of the world. 
sharing God's provision and promises, God's mercy and manna, that bread of true life. As we go, I invite you to let your childlike wonder expand your hearts and minds overtaking your grumbly tummies and let it fill you with the rich grace that God provides. And regularly be wonder women and men who marvel at just how truly precious God is. You have the extraordinary power. Let it be so. Amen. Won't you join me in singing our song of the day, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, 
We pray today for the church, the world, and all of creation. For the church of Christ in all its diverse forms, for mission developers, new mission starts, and all communities of faith exploring new models for ministry for the sake of the gospel. For congregations facing difficult decisions about their future. For all churches who face change in the life of the pandemic, we ask, O oh God, your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the health and well-being of creation and shade trees that provide refuge from the hot summer sun. For lakes, rivers, and oceans contaminated by pollution and all who lack clean water. God, in your mercy. For those called to positions of authority in our legal system, we pray. For judges, lawyers, law clerks, and court employees who ensure the fair administration of justice. For corrections officers and prison chaplains, that they would deal mercifully with those who are incarcerated. Lord, in your mercy. For all who cry out to you in their affliction, for exiles, refugees, and others who face long and difficult journeys, uncertain about the future, for all who mourn the death of a loved one, we especially lift before you and pray for this community at the tragic death of four young men in a terrible car wreck this week. We lift their families to your mercy and care. And we ask, O oh God, that you bless this entire community with a spirit of love and outpouring of care as we feed them with your love. We pray for all who are sick, especially those in this community, those in our hearts. God, in your mercy. For this assembly gathered around your table, we pray. For those among us who bake bread and prepare the vessels for our communion celebration. For those who bring the food from this table to those who are homebound or hospitalized. God, in your mercy. Lord, we lift before you all those in need. Wrap your loving arms around them. And for those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. God, in your mercy. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share God's love and peace with one another with a, a sign of that peace. Jesus, our bread of life, you have set this table with your very self, and we are thankful. We are called to this feast of plenty, and we gather what has been sown among us, and may we be strengthened by this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, for your body is the life of the world. We give thanks for all that you have offered us and continue to offer, and we ask that you help us open our hands to be gracious sharers, to be loving givers as you have first loved us. Christ sets that table with more than enough for all, and so today come. May the bread of life be with you, also with you. Lift your hearts 
in grace and wonder, we lift them to the Lord. Children of God, hope in the Lord, give God thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so it is indeed right to praise our Lord and give you thanks. Gathering up all the fragments of chaos, we gather together to thank our Lord to be at his gracious table. Communion today will be shared again as we leave and depart today. But today we remember this innovative God who took up the frag frag fragments of chaos. And we, O oh Lord, give you thanks. You shape them into creation's wonder. Little children willing to share with everyone. Birds swirl in autumn breezes. Lightning bugs twinkling over summer lawns. You crafted us in your image of love and hope so that we might live in joy with you. But we often withdraw into the embrace of death, preferring to congregate with sin. We continue to watch more for temptation than for you, until finally you sent Jesus into our midst. And so we gather at this table where the holy meal awaits, and we ask that you pour out your spirit on this bread of cup, this bread and cup, and all of your children. As we remember the night in which he was betrayed, that Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is, coming, who is our coming salvation and teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. If you'd please be seated. Are there any announcements from within the congregation uh, today to share with the community? Yes, please. This is just a reminder and maybe a new announcement for some of you that I have created a new nonprofit, uh, faith based, called See Something, Do Something Good. And we will be traveling to Cincinnati in two weeks to do some good there, to continue a project we started seven years ago with a youth group. Um, and I will be uh, selling the glass Hershey, Hershey's Kisses at the back of church afterwards. They're $15 each. Thank you very much for your continued support. Other community announcements to share? Pastor Sue is uh, traveling. Uh, she should be back uh, this weekend. She had to go to a funeral that she was uh, helping conduct a family funeral. So we lift her and her family uh, in prayer as they travel as well. But with that, I also want to uh, give a word of the day. Can anyone guess what it might be? Bread or maybe wonder as well. Well, with that, I do invite you to uh, please stand. And as you make yourself ready to go out, please receive from the ushers this true bread, this living bread from heaven, this meal that sustains us and will carry us through our life eternally. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. Nourish us in this meal. Strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. 
Amen. And let us sing together our closing song, Be Thou My Vision. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the peace of Christ be with you always. Amen.